<laughs> I'll say my name there. Uh, Tense ni toti mak miste he ki tata me hina wao ko ya si o toti me to tawe ya ki te ya okama wak it niya wak ki na nasko me hina wao te peskau pi sum wiki maskwa isedi kasiun. So I'm Daryl Mills is my driver's license name, but uh, my real name is Tipiskau Pisim Wiki Musqua, which means the night sun bear, but night sun lodge bear, you know, and uh, that's the Cree language of my grandfather, Joe Cardinal, that I'm speaking to introduce myself, but uh, I'm also acknowledging the territory we are on, you know, that's how we, we've always introduced ourselves that way. We've always acknowledged territory. It hasn't, it's just, it's become mainstream. But we always had to do that when we entered someone else's territory. But we're in the beautiful Comox and Pentlatch and uh, Ayetskin territory, you know, and uh, those people were here long before us, you know, and what a great uh, gift to be able to be here. You know, many of us have found ourselves here in this beautiful valley, right? And it, there's so much medicine and, and uh, neutrality, meaning uh, welcomeness and diversity. My name's Matt Dene. I'm a hip hop artist by the name of Surreal. I do uh, community workshops and facilitate um, presentations on mental health, suicide prevention, anxiety, bullying, and all that kind of stuff in the community of Nanaimo. So I'm Magda and I live on Denman Island. Uh, I was born in Poland and I grew up in southern France. Just launched a podcast that's called Becoming Whole Again and it is about overcoming adversity and turning pain into power. That's how we heal, is by telling our story. That's the first step, tell your story, tell your story. You'll find other people with a similar story, then pretty soon we're together doing our healing work. So storytelling is a, trans is a gift that you learn from childhood because you want to tell your story. It's important for me to not only include um, my pain in my lyrics, um, but also like other things that I see around me and incorporate those stories into my music as well. So yeah, as a young person, I kind of came up in a really rough environment, um, leading to my dad and my brother taking their lives by suicide. Um, that definitely changed my perspective on things and changed how I looked at life. Um, I had a young son and that changed how I was going forward and now I dedicate my life to trying to help people uh, because of those experiences I've been through, because of the trauma that I've seen. And now I understand mental health a lot more. A lot of my story is about connection and, and the connections that I made growing up and, and some of the people that connected with me, um, I still remember even when I was you know, a kid, I remember every single connection that, um, that happened along the way. And so I do my best to try and connect like that with other people and, and connect through my music that way. I was married to a drug addict for eight years and it was an emotionally abusive relationship. And it was very dark because I had a daughter, so I was caring for a baby. So it was very, it was a very difficult time in my life. I was very confused and sad and angry. I found Kundalini Yoga when I was going through the dark times and I found the light in the yoga studio and that's what kept me going and it has enhanced my life so much and it was not just the yoga it was the experience of getting together with people and sharing the space and sharing this heart opening experience together mm -hmm. as we do the yoga and we do the breathing and the chanting my perspective on turning pain into power is uh, it's a life, life experience, you know, because I've been through that myself. I've uh, gone through, uh, oh, I man, I, I remember, you know, my first 30 years of, you know, almost 30 years of life was in constant pain, whether you call that chronic pain, trauma, traumatic pain. I talked about to my friends this week, I would feel ripped off that 30 years of my life I had to do my healing work. You know, we don't want our children to have to do that to have to go through all that pain and suffering from childhood abuse or violence that they've witnessed or abandonment from parents, whatever that is, because you, you never really start doing your healing work till 20, 30 sometimes. And so uh, you've spent half your life or a good part of your life disassociated, not fully present. And then when you're finally fully present, enjoying life going, what the heck, I got ripped off from all this here. You know, part of it is sobriety for me because I was an alcoholic at 13. 
and that all has to go back. And, and uh, I had a broken back and in the hospital at 16, and it was supposed to be in a wheelchair. So I've gone through a lot of physical chronic pain for that over the years. And I also had two bleeding ulcers. So I remember my childhood as being traumatic, unhappy, and painful. And then carry that into adulthood because you masked it with alcoholism, drinking, or other distractions. And then by the time you get your addiction work, doing your addiction work and your, your healing work, you're transforming that now. And you're starting to understand, okay, I know that if I didn't break my back, I would be dead right now because I live such a high risk lifestyle that it was almost an intervention to slow me down. Even though I carried on after that, still you know, living a higher, high risk lifestyle, if I didn't stop then and have that time to think about where I was going, at, even at 16, I knew that there was something else going on in the world that I could that I could affect in a positive way. Yeah, the mind is our biggest enemy. Yeah, the monkey mind. I was uh, dealing with low vibrational thoughts for years, for years. But um, once you plant the seeds of self-care, the universe will support you. There's no doubt about it. And for me, it was doing the compound effect is doing the little things every day that lead to a big result. So for me, it would be meditation, eating well, going to yoga, listening to devotional music, listening to binaural beats, listening to people that I want to learn from and surrounding myself with beautiful people. Connection is key. It's absolutely the antidote to depression, suicide, and anxiety. Um, I, I talk about connection a lot. Um, just connecting with friends on a daily basis. I check in with a lot of my really close friends on a daily basis, just on a mental health level, just to see how they're doing. And, you know, quite a few times they're not doing well, but just having that conversation helps for that day. I think connection is like a, the most powerful thing it's definitely the medicine, the answer. Uh, I, think, I think if we're living a life where we're not supporting others, you know, maybe we're, that's not our true self because as human beings, we, we are all meant to be in the same circle. So somehow we're lending to each other in our circle, right? Like we have to, we're a part of it. If someone's missing, then the circle's not complete. You know, and uh, so it's such a big question because it really is, you know, about uh, being together and connecting and just like what you, we talk about and, uh, the more separate we become, the more unhealthy, the more uh, at dis-ease, which is not at peace that we are. And we can see that through all this uh, situations that are going on now in the world, the more separate we become. A lot of people struggle with that, eh? you know, so uh, supporting each other is what's come out of it as well. Where some people might think, well, the human, uh, uh, the human condition has taught us to be harmful to one another. And maybe in some places people think that's what would happen. But what really happened is we helped each other. Even though we were supposed to be separate from each other was a condition put on us by the, a suggested condition. It wasn't law. So we, instead we went out and made sure people had food, we made sure our elders were taken care of. Uh, we helped our friends. We connected on internet or otherwise, you know, to help people have a better mental wellness day. You know, so I think we still managed, human beings will always connect and help each other. It doesn't matter, you know, it's, it's the way it is. It, it's what makes us human beings, eh? Having support is important. Mm -hmm. And having people believe in yourself is important. And having people seeing the light in yourself when you cannot see it, that's very important because once you can see the light, then the light will find you. And if you take steps towards um, making your life better, then the path will open you will bring teachers into your life and circumstances and situations and the path will open for you. There's no doubt about it. The advice that I normally give is to express yourself in a, in a healthy way, um, including writing. Writing is probably my biggest one and you know whenever I do a workshop I try and give all the students books and pens um, because that's how I started out, you know. I had a counselor when I was younger say, like, I want you to start writing in this book. And I was like, you want me to write in a diary? And he's like, no, no, it's like a journal. It's like way more manly. So then I kind of got onto that and I started writing when I was about five or six years old. 
and uh, I encourage people to find that expression. You know, there's so many ways, so many things you can look at that, that, is, uh, that is a gift from those times that makes us who we are, but we can transform it into a positive gift, you know, into a good gift. You know, and that, that's, that, we could go on and on and on about that because it really is about healing, you know, and that's how you turn that. It's in the healing work, you gotta turn that, right? And as you heal, you realize a lot of what you carried and thought was not good was actually a very powerful gift that you carry naturally and now you can use it to help other people, you know. You know, you might have thought I was just a wounded child, but it's like, no, it's, it's that. you had gifts, you know. In those wounds, you had gifts. You were probably compassionate to people. You were probably helpful to your friends and you probably did things that people didn't do for you, you did it for them, so it was the same thing, it's a reflection. You know, you're healing yourself, when you help somebody else, you're healing yourself, a part of yourself. That's why we do it, eh? You know? Those are all good things, I think, yeah.